Try this. Take a glass half full of water. Add a spoonful of sugar to it and stir it with a spoon. See what change takes place. Repeat this experiment with each of the substances mentioned below. Wash the glass clean every time you take the next substance. Common salt, honey, washing soda, powdered alum, sand, wheat flour, sawdust, turmeric powder and some oil. What do you see? Sugar, salt, washing soda, alum disappear in the water. They dissolve completely in the water. But sand, sawdust, turmeric powder, all do not disappear even on stirring. They do not dissolve. What does this tell us? Some substances dissolve in water while some substances do not. The substance that dissolves in water spreads throughout the water. When salt dissolves in water, the water in the container tastes salty. When sugar dissolves, the water tastes sweet. A new term. Solution. When a substance dissolves in water, a mixture of that substance and water is formed. This mixture is called the solution of that substance. If someone gets loose motions, we give them a solution of salt and sugar to drink. This solution is called ORS or Oral Rehydration Solution. A patient in a hospital is sometimes put on saline, that is, on a solution of salt in water. Sometimes, other medicines may also be given through saline. These are examples of useful solutions. Do you know? Sea water is salty to taste because it is nothing but a solution of salt that occurs naturally. We cannot use sea water for drinking. Water of different wells may have different tastes. Why is that so? Some substances from the ground dissolve in the water. They give a taste to the well water. But if there is nothing dissolved in water, water has no taste. When we remove the lid of a soda water bottle, bubbles fizz out of it. To make soda water, a gas called carbon dioxide is dissolved in water under pressure. When the lid is removed, the pressure reduces and the gas bubbles out. Try this. Fill a large container with water. Collect the following articles. From your compass box, a plastic ruler, an eraser, a pencil, a sharpener, a rubber band, the compass. From your house, a steel spoon, a plastic spoon, some groundnut shells, an iron nail, a screw, a coin. From outdoors, stones, little twigs, leaves, soil. Put these things in the water and see whether each of them sinks or floats. What do you see? The eraser, sharpener, steel spoon, nail, screw, stones, coin, the compass and the soil sink in the water while the other things float. What does this tell us? Some things float on water while some things sink in it. The things that float are lighter than water. 
The things that sink are heavier than water. Try this. Take some muddy water in a big beaker. If you do not find muddy water, then make some by adding some soil, pieces of dry twigs, straw, leaves, etc. to water. Now allow this beaker to stand still for 4 or 5 hours. What do you see? The particles of soil sink in the water and form a layer or sediment at the bottom. But twigs and other rubbish float on the water. It takes a long time for the sediment to form. What does this tell us? Particles of soil are heavier than water. But because they are very small, they take a long time to settle to the bottom of the water. Leaves, twigs, etc. are lighter than water. Now the water appears much cleaner and transparent than it was. The process of allowing heavier particles to settle to the bottom of still water is called settling. Without disturbing the sediment, pour the water above it into two smaller beakers. Even though this water appears much cleaner than before, there are still some fine particles of soil and some rubbish floating in it. Now carry out the following experiments using these two beakers. Label them 1 and 2. Try this. 1. Take a piece of alum and swirl it once in the water. In the first beaker. Leave this beaker undisturbed for 2 or 3 hours. What do you see? The particles floating in water slowly settle to the bottom. And the water in the upper part becomes transparent. The twigs and straw still keep floating on the water. What does this tell us? Swirling alum in water helps the soil particles in muddy water to settle down. Take another beaker. Place a tea strainer over it. Fold a piece of fine cotton cloth into four layers. Make it moist and spread it over the strainer. Now pour the water in beaker 2 in a thin stream on the folds of the cloth. What will you see? The rubbish and soil particles remain on the cloth. The water collects in the beaker below. It looks transparent. What does this tell us? If we strain muddy water, it helps to make it clean. This process is called filtration. After doing this experiment, throw the water into the soil and wash your hands with soap and clean water. A new term. Potable water. Water safe for drinking. Water that does not endanger our health in any way when we drink it is called safe drinking water or potable water. We have seen some methods of making muddy water clean and transparent. However, such water may still not be potable. Can you tell? In the rainy season, the water of rivers and streams becomes muddy. Why do we not drink that water? When on an excursion, if you find that the water of a spring or well there has a bad smell, would you drink it? Water safe for drinking. Potable water drinking water must be safe for our health. Pure water has no taste, smell or color. 
If water has a color or a foul smell, one must avoid drinking it. It can make us ill. When we get muddy water during the rains, we allow it to settle before using it. If necessary, we use alum or we filter the water. Its muddiness disappears, and the water looks clean and transparent. Can we say that it is now safe for drinking? Let us learn some more about this. New terms Micro, very, very small Organism, a living thing Microorganism, a living thing that cannot be seen by the naked eye or even with a magnifying glass Microscope an instrument for looking at very very small things which we cannot see with our eyes or even through a magnifying glass. Do you know? If we take a bit of yogurt or a drop of buttermilk on a glass slide and place the slide under a microscope, we see very tiny living things in it. They are called microorganisms. These microorganisms convert milk into yogurt. They are useful for us. But all microorganisms are not useful. Some microorganisms cause diseases when they enter our body. They are said to be harmful microorganisms. There are numerous kinds of microorganisms around us. They are in the soil, in water, in air, on rocks, that is, anywhere and everywhere. Even if harmful microorganisms are present in water, we are not be able to see them. Now though the water with such microorganisms looks transparent, would it be safe for drinking? You may know that during the rainy season, we often hear of an outbreak of diarrhea or gastritis. At such times, we need to boil the water that has been cleaned by settling and filtration. Only then does it become safe for drinking. Boiling the water kills the microorganisms in it and prevents diseases. Use your brain power. Some substances do not dissolve in water. What could be the advantage of this? What we have learned, what is the solution? Mother had brought some cumin seeds, jira, from the shop. But some sand got mixed with it. Mother wants the jira seeds cleaned. Some substances dissolve in water. Some substances do not. Some things float on water. Some sink and settle at the bottom. In order to obtain clean water, muddy water is allowed to settle. After settling, the water is cleaned further by swirling alum in it or by filtration. Even in clean transparent water, microorganisms can be present. It is necessary to have safe water for drinking. So water must be boiled to destroy any microorganisms in it. Always remember, even such tiny living things like microorganisms which our eyes cannot see have great importance in our lives.